I'm really excited, as you can tell, uh, because we're starting a new topic today. Now, some of you have encountered this topic before, and it's, a, it's very, very, it's very, very different to all the other topics that we've been doing, but it connects in beautiful ways to so many other parts of um, the course that you are in. So, to set the table, <laughs> to set the table, I want to explain to you the two different kinds of logic that basically are functioning together here and make up mathematical induction. So for starters, let's talk about deduction, because deduction is actually what we've been doing in mathematics, well, since ever since you've been doing mathematics, you've been deducing things. Okay? What does deduction mean? All it's about is to take facts. If you take things you know, right? So think about deductive geometry. It's like, okay, I know these sides are equal. I know these angle, one angle is double the size of that angle. They're supplementary, whatever. You take things that you know to be true, you apply some logic, right? Uh, and that logic often takes the form of results that you've proven before, such as all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. That's a piece of logic which you can apply to a triangle that you know some angles in, right? You take the known facts, you apply logic, and then you draw conclusions, right? This length is going to be whatever, right? Um, this angle is going to be whatever, and there's a straight line from stuff you know to stuff you didn't know before, but on the basis of this logic, it's watertight. We can know with absolute certainty it is true. Okay? Now, induction is totally different. Inductive logic has a similar kind of structure, but the pieces are very, very different. Okay? Inductive logic is to say, take, rather than facts, it's to take a small number of cases. Take a small number of cases. Now I'm going to illustrate this to you in non-mathematical terms in a second. If you have a small number of cases where you observe something happening over and over again, it starts to make you susp suspicious. So instead of applying logic, because I don't have like facts here, I've just seen something happen a few times, I'm going to apply a generalization, right? I think there's a pattern here, a pattern I can take advantage of, and even if I don't have all of the cases in front of me, I can still draw some conclusions on the basis of the generalization that I think is in operation. Okay? So, deduction, which is what we're used to, and induction. Now, just think about this for a second. In most cases, we actually say induction is a bad thing to have in mathematics, right? Because like, just because something is true a few times, that's no guarantee at all that it is always true. So this, when you see it applied like this, is kind of flimsy, right? It's like, well, what if that small number of cases you got was just oh, the weird cases, right? And it was just a bit of a fluke. So induction in its normal, pure form is kind of probabilistic, is the way that they would say it. It's probably true. So let me give you an example. Let's talk about burger induction. <laughs> if I go to a, um, like, you know, a restaurant that sells burgers, okay, that I've never been to before, okay, they might have, say, 50 different kinds of burgers there. 50 different kinds of burgers. They all have pineapple. Okay. Now, I might try the first burger, right? Go to the menu, I'm like, yeah, that looks all right. You try burger one, and it turns out to be like something that gives you indigestion. It's like, okay, would you like some burger with that oil? You know, it's just so greasy. I'm like, okay, this is disappointing. But you say, that's okay. There are 49 other burgers on this menu. So you say, all right, well, I'll just try another one. Burger five. Right? you like, fingers crossed. Maybe it was just bad luck. And then it's like, yeah, you know what? This one. Also disappointing, also felt like uh, you know, I lost three years of my life after finishing this. Um, so burger two, same kind of pattern. And then because you're a sucker for punishment, you're like, no, 48 other options. And it's also crazy. Why would you eat three bad burgers? Well, you know, you're an optimist, okay? So, what have I got here? I have established a small number of cases. A small number of cases. Three out of 50. But I think we all agree it is reasonable at this point, even if it's not 100% guaranteed, it is reasonable to apply generalization and say, you know what, 
I've been sick enough times at this place. I'm gonna say, what conclusion could I draw from generalizing for this? The burgers from this place are greasy. Yeah, all burgers are greasy. Here. All burgers. Um, all burgers at this place, I'm gonna say, according to my generalization, right? That's my patterns. Now, like I said, we could be wrong. There could be like one magical burger that it takes us 49 to get through. It's like, ooh, finally a good one, okay? So this is not rock solid logic, okay? But it's pretty good and we do this logic all the time, do we not? Like I think most people would actually not get to the third burger before this. Like some people even say, just stop the first burger. That's enough, that's enough evidence for me. Okay. So, deduction, induction. What does mathematical induction have to do with all this? I need another color. Mathematical induction. <laughs> 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 mathematical induction says, okay, you know what? I'm not going to take a small number of cases. You remember I said to you, I kind of joke, you know, just one burger, some people would say, that's enough. Mathematical induction takes not just a small number of cases, it takes a single case, right? It chooses it very, very carefully. And then instead of just applying a generalization, like, eh, I think they're all going to be like this. What it does, this is what's clever about it, is it bakes deductive logic into the generalization, right? So it's not just like, yeah, I think this should always, these should always happen because it's happened a lot. There's actually a lot of logic that goes into producing the generalization. So what you get out of this, this mathematical induction, the guts of it are actually still deductive logic, okay? But the whole principle of taking just one little thing and then you know, proving it as the case generally is, for an infinite number of cases, I think it's going to be true. That's the way mathematical induction works. Okay?